Hi, Jeremy here, Modern Vitality. In today's video, Epstein-Barr virus, the experts have it wrong. We're gonna be looking at the common way that the experts see these conditions, right? And when we have complex inflammatory processes, hidden pathogens, it starts to be very muddy water, right? And a lot of times the expert way to do things is missing a lot of key details. So I'm gonna share with you a very straightforward way to flip this whole thing around so that you can start to see your own body in a different light and start to navigate through a simple, straightforward process to get your health back on your own terms. All right, let's get started. So the best way to look at this is with an analogy or a metaphor. And what I want you to do is take whatever diagnosis you've received or diagnoses you've received in the past, okay? All these things that the, the medical establishment and the expert, they're, they're trying their best, okay? The experts that are out there, they're trying their best, but they're operating from a place of having to name syndromes and having to name diseases. And what that does is that can provide a temporary sense of security and validation, right? So for example, if you have a lot of weird symptoms, you don't understand what's going on, you feel like you're losing your mind, and then finally somebody names it with a diagnosis that seems to match what you're experiencing, there's relief, okay? Sure, there's relief because now you know you're not crazy, even though people may have treated you like you're crazy, right? We know what you're experiencing is real, of course, but now you have this diagnosis, this, this name, this language attached to your whole kind of experience, right? And what often happens then is that if there's a diagnosis, but there's no good treatment, then that name just becomes a trap, right? The, the strength of a diagnosis depends on what kind of treatment it leads to. So there, there's a path here. We need to evolve up and out of just a diagnosis. It's a good first step. Get a diagnosis, get a name. I mean, a lot of people that work with me don't have a diagnosis officially, which is just fine. I can operate without that. And I'll show you why. I'll show you how right now. So. I want you to imagine instead of instead of a body, it's a house, okay? Instead of your body, it's a house. You go, hey, this house is cold, right? That's my symptom. So you may have symptoms in your body like uh, headaches, right? Other pains, wandering pains. You may have brain fog. You may have exhaustion. You may have trouble sleeping, low libido, anxiety, depression, digestive issues, whatever, right? Food sensitivities. Seem like you're reacting to everything, always inflamed. Maybe you're you know, having anxiety palpitations are happening too, right? Your nervous system's humming, this happens, okay? Those may be the symptoms you're feeling. We're just gonna use a metaphor. We're gonna look at the house and we're gonna say, okay, here's your house and your house has a symptom, which is it's cold in there, okay? So I just want you to take all those symptoms, your whole symptom picture, we're just gonna transfer it, bundle it up and just call it a cold house, okay? So you go to the expert, the house doctor. You say, hey, doctor, my house, it's having these terrible symptoms. They're driving me nuts, right? I can't do anything. I feel like I'm always <laughs> like having to plan around this and I'm, I'm, my world is shrinking, right? The doctor says, what's going on? You say, okay, here's the symptom. My house is cold. And the doctor says, oh yeah, okay. We've seen this before, right? You're not crazy. Your house actually is cold, right? We can measure it. And uh, yeah, we sent some, we did some tests, right? We sent it to the lab and they came back and it says, you have cold house syndrome, right? Cold house syndrome. And you say, oh, whew. I knew I wasn't crazy. I, I, you know, I doubted it for a minute there, but I'm, I'm glad you validated me. Okay, I have cold house syndrome. Okay, what next? And the doctor says, well, you know, naming it's about as far as we got, right? <laughs> so get cold house syndrome. And, um, you know, if it's cold in there, then one of the things you could do is uh, warm it up, right? So we actually recommend that you get a space heater and you, you put this space heater in your house and you plug it in, turn it on, and that will warm up your house and that should take care of it, right? Now, look at this, okay? It's a perfect metaphor, perfect analogy, because what do we have? Is this sustainable, right? To always have to be plugging in, using more energy, right? This thing. Is the house getting stronger as a result of this? Like, is the house learning how to warm itself better? Or are we just masking symptoms, right? By putting a space heater in there. So we're gonna go, we're gonna have a good time with this. What happens if you put the space heater in the house and it doesn't turn on, right? And you come back to the doctor, you say, hey, I did the thing you said and it didn't work for me. The doctor says, well, that's weird because for you know most of the patients with cold house syndrome, when we put a space heater in there, it works, right? Hmm, I don't know, head scratcher. I, I can't help you. That's all we have. You've reached the end of the medical solutions, right? We're gonna come back to this, okay? Why, why wouldn't the space heater work? Why wouldn't it even do it? Why wouldn't it even mask the symptoms? All right, if you have cold house syndrome, there could be different reasons, okay? How many reasons can you think of? This might be a fun little brain exercise, right? How many reasons can you think of why a house could be cold? So we could have the windows are open, 
right? We could have the insulation is bad or there's none. There could be a hole in the roof. It could be the doors are open. It could be the heater's broken. It could be the power's out, right? It could be something wild like uh, there's a bunch of fans on, okay? There's all different reasons. Maybe the air, air conditioning's on, right? All the systems are working fine, but you've got the, the AC cranked, you know? Of course it's cold in there. There's all different reasons, all different ways that we can arrive at this endpoint of cold house syndrome, okay? All we know is that we've got the symptoms and they seem to match this, this picture, okay? But that doesn't tell us anything about the causes, about the, the systems behind the scenes that are creating this situation, creating this experience. So I would encourage you, we need to start looking backwards. We need to invert this. We need to say, okay, I got it. The house is cold. Why are all the reasons that a house could be cold? And we start listing them off, right? And we start saying things. Some of them might be crazy, right? Maybe there's no roof at all. Maybe one of the walls is missing, okay? That's not very common, but every now and then, right, that does happen to a house. Maybe the air conditioning's on. Maybe the windows are open, right? All these things. So we look at that and we make a list of all the causes, right? And we say, okay, here they all are. Now we can start to troubleshoot, now we can start to go through our house and say, hmm, let's see, is there a big hole in the roof? No, okay, well, we'll cross that one off the list. Are the windows open? No, okay, we'll cross that off the list, right? Is the heat on? No, it's not, huh, that's weird. Maybe this is part of our cause. Maybe this is part of the reason why the house is so cold, right? And now we can go through and we can step by step, we can troubleshoot the different systems within the house and make sure each one is operational and healthy. The same way with your body, you can troubleshoot immune system, digestive system, neuroadrenal, blood circulation, right? You can make sure all this stuff is turned on and running optimally, and there's an order to do it, right? Whole different deal. Now we're looking at the cause level, the causes, right? The causal level of these symptoms instead of working backwards from a disease diagnosis. Cold house syndrome, get a space heater. Great. Yeah, it seems to work for most people. It's not sustainable. They got to always have this thing clunking around, you know, it's extra stuff in the way, you know, the kids are tripping over the cord, etc. right? But for some people, the space heater doesn't even work. Why? Well, maybe those people are having cold house syndrome because their power's out. Adding a space heater isn't going to change anything, right? Think about it. Why sometimes you go on a forum, you ask for advice, you do some research, whatever, you find some silver bullet supplement or something that sounds promising for your situation, cold house syndrome, right? And you try that and then it doesn't work for you. It worked for my neighbor, it worked for my friend, it worked for the person at work, it worked for the lady at the fish store, right? But it didn't work for me. What happens then is we go, oh, well, there must be something wrong with me. My case is even more difficult, right? Because the things that work for other people don't work for me. I feel really hopeless now, right? You gotta be careful, you gotta guard, guard your hope bank, guard your morale. And one of the reasons why things might not work for you is because you may have a whole different causal layer that's creating your situation. Just like plugging in a space heater in a cold house isn't going to change the temperature in the house if it, the house is cold because the power's out, right? Really think about that. Really think about that. This makes sense in a house, but all these experts, and this is what, and I, you know, I'm saying this with compassion. Like I train my colleagues, I'm training other health professionals on this type of thinking because it's so liberating. Once you see it from this way, you can help other people in such a, a clean way. It's just logical and it makes sense and it feels right. And patients get it. Like patients go, oh, you know, this is just like troubleshooting anything else. I can learn how my body works. I can troubleshoot that too. Awesome. I'm empowered now, right? When we start doing this, it's a whole different deal in terms of overcoming complex chronic health conditions because we're looking at causal layers in order, right? Not even just willy nilly, you know, it's like going around and go, okay, I'm going to flip some light switches. I'm going to shut some windows. I'm going to, you know, no, go through your house and, and take a look in order, right? Is the roof missing? Okay. No. And, and keep going. There's a step-by-step -step process that you go through and now you're not missing anything. You're not leaving these little unexplored corners. You're just going through step-by-step -step and checking everything off. You want to be systematic. And it's the same thing with your health. So these experts, they come at it from the other way. They just go, okay, uh, cold house syndrome, let's fight it, let's oppose it, right? Oh, you're having brain fog, right? Oh, you're having uh, fatigue and exhaustion. Oh, you're having pains, right? Okay, well, brain fog. Well, you know, here's a stimulant drug that'll help you focus and that'll help you get more energy, right? And then here's the pains, here's a painkiller. There you go, done deal, right? No, thank you, okay? It's not sustainable and it doesn't work for everybody because it has, does nothing for the underlying causes, 
right? Which secondarily, once we understand this, what's, what's really interesting here is once we understand this is that we can actually improve our whole system beyond just where our symptoms are living. So for example, somebody who has problems with energy level, focus, maybe some pains, right? But they don't have any digestive issues per se. Nothing they're complaining about. And sometimes this happens actually. You'll look at the labs and the labs show some inflammation and some suspect stuff. Like maybe there's gonna be some pre-issues in the digestive system, but there's nothing to complain about yet. If we just look at treating symptoms, you know, maybe you can get them to calm down. Maybe you can start to get some sense of normalcy back. However, if you go stage by stage, right, and you're healing your body properly, what's gonna happen is you're making the whole system stronger. So even if you didn't have any digestive complaints starting out, you can know that the process you're going through is strengthening up your digestive system anyway. It's preventing problems before it happens. It's a whole different way of looking at taking care of your body, taking care of your health. When we start to look at, you know, oh, these systems are damaged, right, in the house. How come it's cold house syndrome? How come you're getting the symptoms you're getting, right? Your systems are damaged in your body. And then we start looking at what damages these systems in the first place, right? Now we're looking at the causes of the causes, Okay, it just keeps going, right? However deep you want to go, you can go. Uh, I'm happy to go that far with you. I was just talking to somebody the other day and I was saying, you know, my job is to meet people wherever they're at and take them as far as I can, right? As far as you want to go. That's that's the relationship. That's the job. I walk with you from wherever you are to as far as I can, right? That's the deal. So when we start looking at causes and the causes behind the causes, and this goes on exponentially, right? You can start to see, okay, what are these triggers? How did we get this damage in the first place? And then once we get some of our strength back, then it's time to turn outward and start to rearrange some of our life and our environment and sometimes our relationships, our relationship with food, our relationship with how we spend our energy, our relationships with other people, what kinds of energies we allow into our sphere, all that stuff, okay? It's super important. You start to curate your environment. It's hard to do that when you're already debilitated and you're like not feeling so good as it is. But that's part of a process, right? Usually when people go through uh, immune system, they start to get a little bit more sense of their boundaries, which is really cool to see happen because the immune system has to do with the boundaries of the body anyway. That's what it is. It's protecting you from not you, right? It's all about, your, your body has a whole system of understanding boundaries. And when that's down or damaged, we also get emotional boundaries can, can get kind of washy too. Pretty interesting to see how these things correlate, right? And then they go through, Get to stage two, digestive system. It's more about the center and figuring out like who you are inside. Stage, I've talked more about this in other videos. I'm just gonna skim through this. Stage three is more about the past and letting go of past issues, past events, right? And then stage four is more about the future. So usually throughout this process, we'll start to see people as they get a little more energy, they start to curate different parts of their life to prevent more damage. Really cool. This is sustainable. This is long term. This is how you heal and recover instead of just trying to plug in a space heater, whether or not you even have electricity on your house. Okay. So don't get stuck in those traps where you're in the, the mental model of the experts who don't know how to look at systems. All right. It's not their fault. They just, you don't get taught this stuff. You know, this is, these are things I've had to seek out myself. I've had to explore. I've had to meditate on. I've had to learn from all different fields of study. I'm constantly reading from places that have seemingly nothing to do with medicine, right? But I find wisdom everywhere in terms of how to look at systems, how to think clearly, get rid of cognitive illusions and biases. Like there's a lot of stuff I look at to keep our problem solving clean and clear so that when we apply that lens to you healing, we don't have a lot of noise, okay? But this is stuff that they don't teach us in medical school, for sure. This is advanced stuff. So don't be too hard on the experts, right? Because they're, they're doing their best. But you know what? Sometimes their best isn't good enough to really solve your problem. And that's why it's important that you take it upon yourself, right? Whether you like it or not, you're here on my channel. You found this place, right? Because you're driven and you're researching and you know that it's worth it. And you have to do some of this yourself. You've been put in that position and you're rising to the occasion. You're rising to the challenge. That's why you're here, right? That happens. I will tell you, you don't have to do this alone, okay? If you're struggling with one of these conditions, and you're kind of lost and trying to figure out what your next steps are and how to put together the pieces of your puzzle and heal, right? You don't have to do it alone. We've got a lovely community. I built it. It's off of all these, you know, it's not on Facebook or anything. We have our own private chat group. I'm in there every day. You can ask me anything you want, 
right? We can say things that are uncensored. Un I don't have to worry about being deplatformed. It's my own group, right? I can be very open, very candid, very honest about anything you ask about. I'll lend my perspective. It's free to join. There's all kinds of other people. It's international, right? There's people from all over the world going through their own healing journeys. So you can watch other people following our process and you can see what's working. You can see where they get stuck. You can see how we troubleshoot things, how we handle bad days and flare ups and how we always keep moving forward no matter what. It's a lovely place. There's not a lot of misery and complaining. It's a lot of support and positivity. It's wonderful. So it's free to join. There's a link in the description. We do fill up. It's a small group. I keep it pretty small, but we do fill up. So that means that there might be a wait, right? If I see your application and it looks good, you look like a good fit for our group, I'll get you in as soon as I can. It might be the next monthly cohort, right? We do them in monthly cohorts. So it might be a month, might be two months. I don't know. I'll try to get you in as soon as I can because I know that you're ready and you want to heal. So we're there, okay? There's all kinds of resources waiting for you. I look forward to seeing you in there. In the meantime, you might consider subscribing to this channel because then you'll get more videos like this one that are about actually getting your health back, right? Finding things that matter to you instead of just kind of being mindlessly entertained by a YouTube algorithm, right? Train that algorithm. Subscribe to channels you like. Like videos, right? So that, that teaches the algorithm what to show you so you can keep learning and, and get your health back because that's probably the most important thing going on right now is you getting your strength back so you can then be there for other people. I hope this helps you. Let's get you feeling better. Cheers.